Welcome to worship this All Saints Sunday. They shall be blessed. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him as he is. 1 John 3, verse 2. Today we lift our eyes from the present and focus them on the promises of God that will be fulfilled in the future. What a blessed day it will be when we will gather with all of Jesus' holy ones around his throne in heaven. But today is also a blessed day. In Matthew 5, Jesus speaks blessings over a crowd gathered on a mountainside. Place yourself in that crowd today. Hear Jesus bless you also. Listen as he speaks of mercy, purity, and peace. And know that this, Jesus does not simply speak of those blessings. He freely gives them to you. How blessed you are today, tomorrow, and forever. Almighty, everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in lives of mercy, purity, and peace, that together with all those whom you have blessed, we may come to the unspeakable joys you have in store for us in glory. Amen. We begin our worship with an act of faith, remembering the name in which we were baptized and acknowledging God's presence among us. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we are celebrating All Saints Day on which we give thanks for all the saints who from their labors rest, those who have gone before us in the faith. By definition, a saint is anyone looked on as holy by God. And we who have faith in Christ here on earth are already declared by God to be his saints. Indeed, he calls us his children. Knowing the eternal end of the story gives us hope in our daily walk through life. As we celebrate the saints of every age, we take to heart the words of the psalmist I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Beloved of God, we rejoice to be numbered with the saints. In confidence, let us come before our gracious Lord to confess our sins and to receive his gracious absolution.
We pray, help me, Lord, for I am in great need. My sins are too many to count. My burdens are too heavy to carry. I call out to you for mercy. I ask for your forgiveness, full and free. I repent of my sins in thought, word, and deed. As the Father who loves me and sent Jesus to die for me, gave me all my sins. By your Holy Spirit, create in me a pure heart. May worship you in the company of all your saints. As your word has promised, bless me as your own. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You have been blessed by Jesus with the purity of heart that comes from sins forgiven. Now we see God with eyes of faith. One day we shall see him face to face. This is all because of his mercy, which he has poured out upon you and all who trust in him. As your pastor, it is my privilege to announce this grace to you, and as he has commanded, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, never God, you into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. You bless us now by your word and spirit. You will bless us for eternity with joy in your presence. Grant us hearts to receive and share all the blessings you so freely give through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we would invite the children forward for this morning's children's message led by Mrs. Halstead. everybody today? Good. You guys doing good? That's good. I'm glad to hear it. We can get some things ready. Good morning. I'm glad you're all. This thing is a little weird. I'm glad you're all here today. I want to ask you, I want to ask you a question. What makes you happy. Tessa? Casey, my sister. Mm-hmm, good. Maeve? My family. Your family makes you happy. Anything else? Michael, what makes you happy? Plain, I figured that. Okay, well, when I was younger, this was one of my favorite books when I was about your age. Okay? And I just loved The Peanuts. Charles Schultz is the author. And this was one of my favorite ones. Happiness is a warm puppy. And I just want to share a few of them with you. Happiness is an A on your spelling test. Happiness is three friends in a sandbox with no fighting. This one is especially for today, probably. Happiness is sleeping in your own bed. Happiness is getting together with your friends. Happiness is knowing all the answers. We all want to be happy, don't we? Yeah, I think that's pretty true. Yeah. It's better than being sad all the time. Yeah. Okay. Does it surprise you that God wants you to be happy too? 
It shouldn't surprise you, should it? Okay. But what we're going to find out is that what Jesus says about happiness is a lot different than what we think about happiness. Sometimes we think having lots of money or being really popular, all of those things make us happy, but that isn't what Jesus said. What does popular mean? Popular means everybody likes you. Everybody wants to play with you. One day, Jesus went up to the side of the mountain. He sat down, gathered his disciples around him, and began to teach to them about happiness. Even though these aren't the exact words Jesus used, I think you'll understand what he taught, and you're going to help me today. So, we have some bee puppets, Maeve, Tessa, you want to take a bee puppet? Ivy? Those were the girl bee puppets. Now we have to go to the boy bee puppets. My sister was a bee mm -hmm. for Halloween. She was, Michael. Liam. Ryder. Okay. Anytime you hear me say the word be happy, I want you to raise your bee up. Jesus said things like this, be happy when you are poor in spirit, because then you will find your riches are in the kingdom of heaven. Be happy when you feel you have lost what is most dear to you, because it is then that you will feel the love of the one who is most dear to you. Be happy with what you have, because then you will find that your Heavenly Father provides you with everything you need. Be happy when you are hungry for things of God, because then you will find out that only He can satisfy you. Be happy when you are caring for others, because it is in caring for others that you will find that you have a Heavenly Father who cares for you. Be happy when your heart is right with God, because it is then that you will see that God is at work in the world around you. Be happy when you help others get along peacefully with one another, because it is then that you will know that peace comes from being part of God's family. Be happy when others treat you badly, because you follow me, because your reward will be great in heaven. You see, happiness isn't a feeling that is brought about by the things that happen to us. It is an attitude that we have because of the things that are in our heart. We need to be like the bee buzzing happily through life because what a God has done for us. Let's pray. Dear Father, help us to have the happiness that you want for us. Happiness com that comes not from what happens to us, but from what happens inside of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you may keep your bees to remind you about the bee attitudes today. <laughs> Have a great day. Good one. The first lesson is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7. There's some difficult things in here. Numbers in, uh, in Scripture, but numbers for the Hebrews were, were often symbolic, and Hebrew numerology had particular uh, meanings. Here, in this lesson, 144,000 is symbolic of all of the believers on, on earth. Uh, and the listing of the 12 tribes, it, it doesn't match any list in the Old Testament. It's some are there and some are missing, and just, so it's not these are the ones from whom all the believers come. It's, it's again, it is symbolic. 
uh, everywhere in the uh, in the uh, scripture, especially in the book of Revelation, 12 is the number of the church, and 10 is a number for completion. So 12 squared is 144, and 10 cubed, 10 completion times itself forever, is thus 144,000. In the book of Revelation, chapter 7. Oh, it's not working. Oh. Still working? Now it's working. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of, of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the time of, tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them into springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
second lesson is from the book of 1 John, the third chapter. Being a, a child of God is a gift from the Father, never an achievement of our own. And a wonderful future awaits the child of God. John writes, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. The word of God for the people of God. Please rise for the Alleluia verse and the reading of the gospel. Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter five. The 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 beginning of the of the Sermon on the Mount. This this text, the Sermon on the Mount, is one of the most uh, loved and and best known uh, passages of all of all of Scripture. Here, this is the, the beginning. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Be seated for the sermon hymn.
from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Though we do not realize it often, our liturgical calendar, our church calendar, is full of days set aside to remember, to celebrate the saints. All Saints Day is one of those days celebrated on the 1st of November, but remembered this, this weekend. It heaps all of those saint days together. On this day, the church remembers, we remember, all of those saints who have gone before us. Now, question for you today. What comes to mind when you hear the term saint? Hmm? Maybe you think of someone that set a great example of life. They accomplished some great spiritual feat, did some amazingly good deed, lived a life in a moral, morally accomplished way. Perhaps they even went to the ends of the earth to proclaim the gospel. But what comes to your mind when you hear the word saint? We have church named after saints, don't we? In scripture and in sermons, we sometimes refer to the author as saint. Like Saint John or Saint Paul. Oftentimes that term saint is nebulous. We can sometimes be uncomfortable with it. For us to use St. Paul, sure, we're all okay with that. But what about St. David, St. Abraham, St. Joseph? Hmm? Now that's a little too far. Who is a saint? What is a saint? Your answer reveals a lot about how you view the concept of sainthood. But God's answer reveals even more to us this day. Think about it for a moment. If a friend asked you, how would you define the term saint? This, this very gospel-centered word. Consider our text for today, 1 John 3, uh, emphasizing uh, certain verses here as I read this letter again. St. John writes, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Now this is not just familiar old language, language of family. This is saintly language, language of the saints. Because at the root of a being a saint is a being righteous, whole, holiness, purity, in thought, word, and deed. That is what the root of being a saint is. Purity in thought, word, and deed. Righteousness in thought, word, and deed. Wholeness of life in a relationship with our Creator. Knowing this now, I would ask you again. Are you a saint? Would you object if someone said that you were? Maybe you would. Maybe I would. In a false sense of humility. I mean, after all, deep down inside, it kind of strokes our ego. I like the idea of Saint Andrew. But oftentimes they, we, I, would go, if they knew the real me, they would never use such a term for me. It's a fortunate thing our thoughts don't scroll across our heads and the secrets of our lives remain a secret to everyone, well, except for God. It's how we keep up our appearances with one another after all. But are you a saint? I'm not asking about those false sense of piety or the appearances that we like to put on. I'm asking about your true identity, who you really are, who I really am. Well, if we, if we were to answer that question in and of ourselves, most likely with a resounding no this morning, God's answer about you, about me, about us is clear. In Christ, you most certainly are a saint. How can this be? Hmm? How can this be? Because the title of saint isn't a title given from the law. It's not a law title. It's not a title about what you do or how you have proven yourself to be good, which we can't do anyways. Instead, it's a gospel title. 
It's a title given to you about what God has done for you in Christ. God has declared you a saint by grace through faith. He has said that you are innocent in his sight, pure, holy, righteous, a saint. But this sainthood, of course, is not our own. Definitely not in origin our own. But it is ours. It is our identity. It is given to us as a gift. You are as much of a saint, I am as much of a saint, as even the famous ones from the Bible that we refer to as saint. Their Jesus is your Jesus. Sainthood knows no levels in Christ. You are the same as St. Paul, St. John, St. Moses, St. Abraham. You share the same righteousness, the same holiness that they have. You share in the same sainthood as all of the hosts of heaven do this very moment. Those who died in the faith, you share in that same name, that same gospel title of saint. That's a lot to handle today, isn't it? Because that's not often how we think about as saints. That's not how we imagine holiness works. Perhaps God's holiness ascribed, given, bestowed to us is simply, well, too easy. Seems too simple. But it's more than enough. Because it's more than we can ever do or earn. God gives that title of saint to us. You see, when we think about ourselves as a saint, because that's who we really are in Christ, his purity grants us rest from our weary ways of trying to find all sorts of false pietistic type expressions of our faith. The title saint grants hope for all of us, myself included, who continually struggle with that sin in our lives. The title of saint frees us from that desire to always measure up to what we think a good Christian is or a good person is. It frees us so we do not have to be better Christian people, but rather people who are in Christ. You see, in Christ, by grace through faith, we can rejoice to be saints of God and rest in what Jesus has done for us. We are sainted because of his perfect life, because of his death, which he died in our place. I mean, I struggle with this, of course. I certainly don't feel like a saint. I am sinner and saint, much as the same way that you are sinner and saint. But our true identity is that of a gospel title, is that of saint. And when we struggle, as I struggle, remember this. St. Peter? <laughs> he denied Christ. Not once, but three times. Christ found him, restored him, sainted him. What about Moses? St. Moses? Well, he was a murderer. How about St. David, the adulterer? St. Paul, the terrorist? How about St. Mary Magdalene? She was possessed by a demon. Every other baptized Christian, every other baptized saint, we are there with them. Are you a saint this day? Even though we may not feel like it this morning, yes. Yes, we are. And in our doubts, as I often have them, I look to my baptism. For here is where Christ, here is where his work, here is where his holiness and purity washed over you. Here is where you were given that title, saint. And our baptism is where we were sainted. So this All Saints Day, my brothers and sisters, we do remember all of those who died as saints in the faith. Most importantly, we rejoice in the one who made them and us saints, Jesus Christ. 
So let's celebrate this day as a saint would celebrate. We give thanks for all of the sinners declared as saints by Christ. We rejoice that the same word that spoke faith into their life is still speaking into our lives. Still sainting sinners for the sake of the one whose righteousness is ours. For he alone, and he alone is the source of what it is to be a saint. So brothers and sisters, my friends in Christ, take heart this day. Because this title isn't from you, but from him. And it's a gift for us. It is as sure because he is the giver of that gift. The one to whom all saints, both past, present, and future, point to. He is the one in whom we all live, move, have our being. All saints in his Christ, this day, for his sake. Amen. The creed is the church's word in response to the word of God. Please rise. Today we use as our confession of faith, our creedal statement, the words of the Nicene Creed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what do you believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of the Father before all worlds. God, God, light, 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 light. very God, very God, 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 God not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in the glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have not no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together in his worship and glory. <coughs> by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We honor the saints who lived by faith followed God, God's commands, and now have reached their heavenly home. We follow the saints who traveled before us, fought the good fight, and now have won the crown of glory. <coughs> we stand on Zion's hill, their faces shining like the sun. We too will stand on Zion's hill, our faces shining like the sun. Now we are not strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God. For the dividing wall of sin is shattered by the cross. The gates of bliss open wide for us.
scripture says in Psalm 116, verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. On this All Saints Sunday, we remember and give thanks and praise to God for the life and for the death of his saints. We rejoice with those who rejoice, and that includes rejoicing with those whose happiness now knows no end in the kingdom of glory. During the past year, families in our congregation and our extended church family have been impacted greatly by the death of ones they love. As those who trust in Jesus Christ, we do not grieve as the rest of the world grieves. We grieve in hope. We pray with confidence and we live with certainty that those who have died in Christ are secure in his presence. We also rejoice that one day we shall join them in their heavenly joy which knows no end. We honor the life and give thanks to God for these his saints. <clears throat> Bob Hicks, Bunny Matthias, Harry Grant, Paul Cuck, Mary Esther Smith, Lee Herrer, Patty Yunk, Dora Cock, Sandy Brown, Don Nelson, Cheryl Corkle, Ruth Wolf, Tom Mate, Donna Molig, These and, and all others dear to our hearts who have entered into everlasting rest with the Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Merciful Father, whose dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, rose victoriously over death and the grave, we remember with thanksgiving your faithful people who have trusted in Christ whose tears are gone and whose sorrows you have turned to joy. We humbly implore you to strengthen us in the confident hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for our fellow saints of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all the nations of the world that their leaders see with your eyes of justice and mercy the needs of their people and that your blessed ones represent you among every nation, tribe, people, and language. Let us pray to the Lord. For your body, the Christian Church on earth, that we see in our service the coming of your kingdom into the world, and that our love for others reflect the love our Savior has shown to all, let us pray to the Lord. For all the families of our congregation, that in our seeing the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, the grieving, we see you in them and welcome the opportunity to bless others as you have first blessed us. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who grieve the death of those they love, 
that their hearts be filled with your peace and their eyes of faith behold you until the day of our reunion at the throne of the Lamb when we shall see you face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, that they receive your blessing through the healing that comes by your power alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your care, O Lord, we entrust all for whom we pray, always relying upon your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. We rejoice that by his death and resurrection you have called us to be your saints and have promised to bless us forever. Gathered in the name of Jesus, we ask you, O Lord, to bless us as we share in the one loaf and partake of the one cup of salvation. Along with all your saints, both those who wait for you on earth and those who are in heaven, we praise your holy name as we say, Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The reign of God is at hand. Come, taste the joy prepared for you. Come to the table of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of Christ our Savior given and shed for you, strengthen you and keep you steadfast in Christian faith and to everlasting life. Go in joy and peace to serve him. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We pray, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our, the days of a pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your blessed saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.